One of the reasons that Gecko dynamic optimization is fast is because we can do model reduction. And so we're going to demonstrate that with this problem, a reactor problem. We're going to use intermediates with Gecko. And so to get a little bit of documentation on the latest Gecko, just come to this link right here. It'll give you an overview of how to get started. The very first thing that you'll need with this in Python is just to pip install Gecko. And so it'll go out and collect Gecko and install it for you. Okay, so there's also some documentation there on other commands, other things to get started. We also have uh, this course website just to get you started. There's also, you know, in here we're going to be solving this benchmark problem. This is going to be benchmark problem number four. And so if you just scroll down, you're going to see example four. Looks like this is uh, loading still. Okay, so you can see different benchmark problems. And then if you scroll down all the way down to number four, this is our batch reactor with consecutive reactions. A goes to B goes to C. And uh, we have a solution there, MATLAB and Python. We're going to be running through this Gecko code right here. Okay, so let me come back here and just uh, talk about this problem. We want to maximize the uh, this, this species X2. And what we're going to do is have this uh, batch reactor that we're going to add this, uh, you know, these compounds to, and then it's going to go between uh, zero and time one. Okay, so we're going to start at our initial conditions, which is, you know, x one is going to start at a value of one, and x two is going to start at a value of zero, and then we're going to go forward to time equals one. And we're going to try to maximize the value of x2 at the final point. And we do this by adjusting the temperature throughout the run. So there's the beginning. Here's our initial temperature. And then we might adjust our temperature throughout uh, this time period. So there's a couple differential equations that we need to uh, write and consider for solving this problem. This is essentially x1, okay, um, is going to go to x2. And there we have a reaction rate, which is k1 uh, times x1 squared. And that's going to be a forward reaction rate. Now you also have, um, after it goes to x2, you have another reaction that goes to x3. We don't track that third species, but that's going to be a reaction rate of K2 times X2. Okay, so we have these two reactions, and we want to try to maximize the amount of this intermediate species X2. So we can adjust the temperature throughout. Now we know that the K values are going to be functions of temperature. Okay, there you can see how they're used in the differential equations. And you have a kind of a standard Arrhenius expression here for both of those, just with different pre-exponential factors and activation energies. Okay, so now you have the temperature can be as bounded between 298 and 398. You have the initial conditions that we've talked about before, and we're going to go up to a final time of 1. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and set this up in Gecko. And what I'll do is just bring up the code over here, and let's just step through this line by line. So the very first thing I'll need to do is just import NumPy and matplotlib, and then also import Gecko. I'll create my new model, which is M. And here are the number of time points I'm going to have between 0 and 1. So I'm going to solve it in intervals of 0.01. And just set up the m.time equals numpy lin space. So that's 101 time points between 0 and 1. Here are some of my parameters. For example, the temperature is my manipulated variable. I'm just going to say it's a value of, you can put anything in there for your initial value. And then you have your upper bound of 398 and your lower bound of 298. 
turn its status on. Uh, by default, it has a little bit of a delta cost for movement. I just set that equal to zero. Here are some variables, variable one and variable two. We need to give those initial conditions. So there's a value of one and a value of zero. And this is where the model reduction comes in. Okay, so I'm gonna be using K1 and K2 as algebraic expressions. And I could write those as variables and equations, or I could have those solved uh, explicitly and substituted into the equations for me. Okay, so I just set up one intermediate, which is K1, and that's gonna be a function of my temperature. And then K2 is gonna be my second intermediate. Okay, now my equations. I'm going to use the K1, uh, K2, X1, X2, and the and uh, you know the T values are there in the K1 and K2. There's my first differential equation. Okay, and my second differential equation, the X1 dot dt is just dx1 dt. Okay, and then there's my X2 dx2 dt, and don't forget to use the double equal sign there. Okay, that uh, second one is a little bit more complicated, okay, but um, not too bad. And then my objective function, I have my objective, and I want to maximize x2. And so what I do is I'm going to need to set up just the final value for that. So I'm going to set up a new p value, which is just going to be zeros everywhere with 101 time points. And I'm just going to set the very last one to 1, and then create a final parameter with value equals p. And then when I uh, try to maximize that, I'm going to do a negative x2 because negative of a maximum equals a minimum, and gecko requires minimization. So if you have a maximization problem, just multiply your objective by negative 1. And then I'm going to multiply it by the final so that I just maximize the very final point. Here's my i mode. That's going to be dynamic optimization equals 6. And then I solve it. If you want to solve it uh, locally in that parentheses, just put remote equals false. And for Windows systems, you'll be able to solve it locally without an internet connection. I'm printing just my final x2 value. That's x2 negative 1. So it's going to go out and get just the final value. Then I'm going to create a figure with a couple subplots. I'm going to plot my concentrations x1 and x2 on the first one. And on the second one, I'll plot my temperature. Okay, I'll show it. Um, okay, so there's my script that's going to be able to solve this. Again, this is using automatic model reduction through these intermediate variables. And let's just go see what the results are. I'll run it in Python 3.6. It should also work in 2.7. I'm going to use the IPOPT solver in this case. Okay, so here is my temperature profile on the bottom. And you can see the value of x2 that rises. Um, the x1 is going to fall as that reacts away. Now, if you went, uh, you know, see, so, so this temperature profile, it starts high, gets the reaction going toward the intermediate, and it essentially goes to a low value to help quench the reaction. Okay, so once it's maximized the value of x2, it minimizes temperature and kind of shuts off that second reaction. So it's doing it at the right time to give us the most x2, our intermediate concentration. Okay, and you can see the objective here in the window that we had printed out. It's uh, 0 0.607, and you can see this is our minimization. We had to multiply it by negative 1, but there's our final concentration right there. Okay, so just to summarize with this, uh, we set up and solved... Uh, this dynamic optimization problem where we had the temperature varying from during this time period of 0 to 1. And uh, the unique thing about this problem that we demonstrated was being able to do model reduction, basically eliminating these from the dynamic optimization problem by substituting these in as intermediates. Okay, and um, you know, make sure you just refer to you know, these websites for additional information on Gecko and solving dynamic optimization problems.